Hey guys, during this video we're going to cover subtopic 1.3 on quantities of atoms. We're going to break up uh, this subtopic into two videos and during this video we're going to cover the first two subtopics. The first one here is to understand how the quantities of particles can be compared using the mole unit and the second one is to determine the relative atomic mass of an element. So this is the first science understanding that we have here. The quantities for different substances can be conveniently compared using the mole unit. Now chemists need a way to count particles and this can consist of atoms, molecules and ions. Chemists use a unit of measurement which we call the mole. But a question for you is what is the mole? So to put it simply, the mole is a collective unit. And it's similar to how we use the word dozen, because the dozen represents 12 of a particular object. So the dozen is a collective unit, and the mole is also a collective unit. It's just that in this case, one mole is equivalent to a much greater number compared to the dozen. One mole is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 uh, of a particular unit. And that's a, a really, really big number, which we also refer to as the Avogadro constant. If we want to see how big the Avogadro constant is, uh, I'm just going to draw this out for you so you can see really how big this number is. So we're going to start off with the 6. So we've got 6002. Uh, sorry, 6022. And that's how big the number really is. And you can understand why we need to use scientific notation in this case. So you can see that one mole is a very, very, very big number, and it's a collective unit that we use in chemistry. So a bit about the Avogadro constant. We can make some comparisons uh, to the dozen. So if we say that we have one dozen eggs, that's equivalent to 12 eggs. We could say, therefore, if we have one mole of eggs, uh, we have equal to uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 eggs. If we have one dozen cars, well, we know that that's equal to 12 cars. One mole of cars. So keep in mind, one mole is equal to, again, this number here. So we would have a heck of a lot, heck of, a lot of cars. And because we're really referring to chemistry and looking at atoms and molecules and ions, we have one dozen atoms, we've got 12. And if we have one mole of atoms, then again, we're going to have this number here. It's important that you keep that number in mind because you'll be expected to know uh, this value here. So a question might be, why do we actually use the mole? Keep in mind that if we look at trying to measure the mass of individual particles, the mass is actually extremely small. And we can see here that one atom of hydrogen has a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. If we're being a bit realistic and we're handling substances in a lab, we're often dealing with extremely large numbers of, of those particles, whatever they are. So what the mole allows us to do and allows chemists to do is to quantify and simplify extremely large numbers. So to try and keep track of how much of a particular substance we have. And I like to think of the mole as the chemist doesn't. Going to the second science understanding for this lesson, we want to learn about what the relative atomic mass is and look at how this links into isotopes. So let's just do a bit of a recap. Isotopes are atoms of an element that have the same atomic number but a different mass number. And another way we can put that is that it contains the same number of protons but those atoms would have to contain different numbers of neutrons. This ensures that it is the same element and then this ensures that they are isotopes of one another. And we know in nature that many elements exist as a combination of different isotopes. So here's one of those examples. We've got carbon here existing in three different forms or three different isotopes. We've got carbon 12, 13 and 14. What we can see here using this key is that the carbon atoms differ only based on the number of neutrons. Carbon-12 has 6, 13 with 7, and carbon-14 with 8. 
One other thing that we can look at is the percentage abundance of them. So we know in nature that carbon-12 makes up 98.9% .9 of all carbon. Carbon-13, 1.1 about there, and then carbon-14 is extremely small, 0.0001%. The relative atomic mass, uh, REM for short, for an element is the average of all the masses of the different isotopes uh, that we can find for an element. So it's trying to average all of those different isotopes and, and how prevalent they are, and it considers what their mass is. So let's just say that we had two different isotopes that existed for a, a particular element. If we want to calculate the relative atomic mass, we would take the percentage of the first isotope, we would convert that percentage into a decimal number, and we can do that by dividing by 100, and then we just multiply by the actual mass number we do that and then we add that to a very similar thing to isotope 2. So the percentage of isotope 2 divided by 100 and then multiplied by its mass number. If we have three isotopes, then we will just simply add a very similar expression for the third isotope. The units for relative atomic mass are atomic mass units or AMU for short. And in some cases you might see that there are no units assigned at all. We can say that one AMU is defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And that's because we actually use carbon-12 as a standard. And I can talk to you guys in class about why we actually use carbon as a standard. But just keep in mind, uh, for now, the relative atomic mass of carbon-12, we can treat it as exactly equal to 12 AMU. And so what we do is we make comparisons uh, of carbon-12 with other atoms, uh, so we can see what their relative atomic mass is. So let's just say that we got given some information about the isotopic composition. So in other words, the uh, makeup of different elements and their isotopes. So in this case, we've got some chlorine here. And what we can see from the graph as well as the data is the percentage abundance of the two isotopes. I'll stick with this because it's the, I guess, my, most accurate, but we've got here 75.76% made up of the isotope uh, chlorine-35, and then chlorine-37 makes up 24.24%. How do we actually calculate the relative atomic mass? So if we use that same formula as uh, on the previous slide, we just need to look at the percentage abundance of each isotope, convert it into a decimal number and multiply it by the mass number. If we do this for chlorine, what we would end up getting is 75.76 divided by 100. Multiply that by the mass number and then add that to the second isotope. So 24.24 divided by 100, multiply it by the mass number of isotope 2. And if you just do that calculation, I won't do it now, but what you should get for your answer is 35.45 AMU. So what that says is that the average mass of a chlorine atom sits close to chlorine 35, sits close to 35, but because there is some chlorine 37, it ends up increasing the overall average mass. Let's have a look at a second example. So we can see here magnesium. And in this case, we've actually got three different isotopes here. So this graph tells you the percentage abundance and we've got the values specified here. And we also know what the different mass numbers of magnesium can be. So we've just summarized that information here. And again, in the same way, we can calculate the relative atomic mass. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got the first isotope multiplied by the mass number. And for some of you guys, you might realize that you can just easily convert the percentage straight away so you don't need to divide by 100 or at least show that in your calculation. So the second one, we can just summarize that as 0 0.1013, multiply that by 25, and finally, the last one, 
And what we should find is that we end up with a number close to this here, 24.32 AMU. Now, thankfully enough, we actually have this information given to us. So this is a periodic table that we'll generally use in class. And what this shows you is, in actual fact, the relative atomic mass of your different elements. So carbon atoms, for example, have a relative atomic mass of 12.01. We can see here chlorine at 35.45. Magnesium, it was relatively close, and a lot of that depends on the data, but we can see here 24.31. So that concludes the first video on 1.3. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.